can see the soil here is pretty weird. It's the just compressed Miocene marine sediments, ocean sediments. And you can really see it over there. Look at all that sandstone. Again, we're very close to the uh, San Andreas Fault, but we're on the North American Plate. Ten miles to the west, you'll be on the uh, Pacific Plate. Look at this little dainty bastard. Species of Castilea. A hemiparasite, meaning it's got its own chlorophyll and it can photosynthesize, but uh, it does like to borrow, aka engage in force sharing with uh, probably this Listhenia, maybe even this uh, Trifolium, this clover right here. Hopefully the fucking Erodium too, this bad, this these bastards. See that, the little bird beak? Erodium is the genus, bad invasive. Geranium family. You gotta cast the land It's so dainty and nice. Isn't it nice? Look at that. Again, it's all Lestinia Californica. A dainty little annual aster. But then look at this. You get over here to the white. See where it's so white? And it's that Castilea. Actually, it's a different Castilea. I don't think I, seen, I showed you this one yet. Look at this nice. It's got a white and yellow... Uh, Corolla, look at these long, that Corolla tube is long too. Pardon my shadow. God, it smells delightful. It's so nice. And I don't mean intolerable disdain. Which is what nice means in Chicago, if you've uh, been keeping up with uh, the times and the uh, the parlance of the times. Lone little dicholostoma sticking up there. Again, that's Castilea. This guy, it's a Castilea species. Species of paintbrush is the colloquial name. Look at this lichen. This lichen's amazing. It looks like when the dog throws up on a carpet and it's got some bile in it. You know, it's all foamy and whatnot. But uh, it's just sitting here photosynthesizing and then probably uh, slowly uh, breaking down this sandstone boulder. Look at this guy, though. This is this is real nice, okay? This is really nice over here. Salvia cardoacea. They call it thistle sage. Actually, I don't call it that. I don't know who the fuck calls it that. I don't know why. Because, you know, common names, again, can be so misleading and, and kind of useless. But, uh, look at it. And isn't it interesting? There's trichomes. Look at all those trichomes. Same thing you see with salvia funeria. So I wonder if they're related. I wonder if this is a whole clad of California salvias that get these nice, uh, these inflorescences that are just laden with those those trichomes and these are small guys right here nice basil rosette scapos these are small guys you know normally i've seen them they get you know foot two feet three feet tall look at those anthers look at the anthers got their red stuff on them what a beautiful flower huh get over it i just i can't get over it look at it you got a fringed Labiate Corolla. Those anthers are just popping out. They're just, they're so nice. And then, of course, this is sharp. It actually hurts. It's kind of stabby, you know? I popped into this one when I was trying to take a picture of the other one over here, you know, and it hurt. And I liked it. I like it, you know? It's uh, somewhat aggressive. It's, uh, it's defensive, but you get what I mean. Now, how much seed gets produced in this little... What the hell do you call a salvia inflorescence when it's all, at least the, the California salvias, they're so, they're so globose. What you call that? I don't know. But how much seed gets produced in there? Because if it's an annual, hopefully it's producing a lot of seed. Because some of that's going to get eaten. They're not all going to make it. And then again, it, Lestini is just going nuts. You know, I just, I can't stop looking at that because it's so nice. It's so just all-encompassing, you know? 
Plus, I could smell it. It's so it smells so strong. It's fucking incredible. But uh, anyway, here's a nice little. You know they, where we are right now. You see a lot of stuff from the the Mojave Desert. Uh, has a distribution here, and uh, this is one of them. Obviously, ephedra. Not sure on the species. They're very hard to tell apart sometimes. But uh, anyway, you can see this right here. What's going on? This is such a weird genus, okay? Because it's not an angiosperm. I guess it's technically a gymnosperm, like, uh, you know, it's a conifer, like pines and redwoods, etc. what the shit. But the whole family, uh, Nitaceae, with, that's with a G, if that makes any sense, is, uh, is really something, there's something else. They, it's, it's, like I said, it's technically a conifer. So here's the male cones, you know, poking out, doing their thing. And this, of course, is what they used to make trucker speed out of, well, pseudoephedrine. You know, they call it uh, Mormon tea. I think they used to call it that. Did they call it that? Who is they? What am I talking about? Have I not eaten very much today except for a can of corn, a can of peas, and a cup of instant coffee? Yes, I have not eaten anything today. I need to stop this. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't think to uh, bring any food. So I'm just living on uh, whatever cans of random, uh, random shit that I have in my truck. Anyway, here's the Eric Camaria. Now, this is common. This is quite ubiquitous uh, all over the place here in the Central Coast Ranges. Uh, this species is seen, you can see it, you know, down in the hills and what the shit. It's uh, pretty resilient. It's a perennial shrub, as you can see. The genus itself, though, is quite impressive. I don't know how many goddamn species there are in this genus, Eric Camaria, but, the, you know, there's got to be at least 40 or 50, and they're all over the West. All right, they go all the way up into Idaho. They go all the way down into Baja. A lot of speciation, a lot of diversity. Uh, some of the flowers don't even have rays. They're just discoid flowers, I believe. Especially when you get down into a Mojave Desert. They, they're very successful in xeric areas. Very successful xeric perennial subshrub aster. Kick me in the dick. Look at those beautiful flowers in full anthesis. Oh, my God. 